It's just before sunrise at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, and suddenly the quiet coastline lights up with a fiery streak heading for the sky. That was the U.S. Air Force launching a Minuteman III missile. It was their second test this year, and it's basically a routine checkup to make sure our nuclear defense system is working perfectly, that it's effective, accurate, and reliable. Think of it like a very, very expensive and complicated fire drill to ensure the system is ready to go if it's ever needed, which everyone hopes it never is. Now, the Air Force made it super clear that this wasn't a response to anything happening in the world. These tests are planned way, way in advance, sometimes years ahead. The missile itself was unarmed and flew about 4,200 miles across the Pacific, an incredible journey that took it high above the atmosphere before it came screaming back down to Earth, landing right where it was supposed to, near the Marshall Islands. Instead of a bomb, it was carrying a test re-entry vehicle, which is a fancy way of saying it was packed with a bunch of sensors. These sensors collect all sorts of data on the flight, how the rocket motors performed, how the guidance system navigated, and how the vehicle handled the intense heat of re-entry. This info helps engineers plan future upgrades and just double check that everything is in tip-top shape. In a world with rising tensions, these kinds of tests are a way of showing both allies and adversaries that America's nuclear defense is ready and reliable. It's all part of a strategy called deterrence, which basically means having a defense so strong that no one would ever want to start a fight. So, what exactly is the Minuteman III system? Well, it's a long-range missile that uses solid fuel, and it's a key part of America's defense. To keep them safe from attack, the missiles are spread out in super tough underground silos made of reinforced concrete. Think of them as underground fortresses buried deep in the ground and covered by a massive blast door that weighs over 100 tons. They're designed to survive anything except a direct hit from another nuclear weapon. These silos are all wired up to an underground launch control center, often miles away. Down there, in a small capsule suspended by shock absorbers to survive an earthquake or a nearby blast, crews of two officers are on duty 24-7. They live and work in these underground bunkers for 24-hour shifts, ready to follow orders from the president at the moment's notice. And it's always a two-person crew. That's a key safety rule, so that no one person can ever make the decision to launch. They both have to turn their keys at the same time in consoles that are too far apart for one person to reach both. It's a powerful and sobering responsibility. There's a whole network of communication systems to make sure the president can talk to these crews instantly and reliably. And what if something happens to the ground control center? There's a backup for that too. A special plane, the E-6B Mercury, acts as a flying command post, often called a doomsday plane. It's always in the air and can take control of the missiles if the ground crews are knocked out. The crews on that plane are fully trained to carry out the president's orders, making sure the system works no matter what. It's also pretty cool to know that the Minuteman is just one piece of a bigger puzzle called the Nuclear Triad. It's a three-pronged defense strategy to make sure that no matter what happens, America can retaliate. 
The other two parts are submarine launched missiles. These are carried on super stealthy Ohio class submarines that are always hiding somewhere deep in the world's oceans. They're basically undetectable, making them the most survivable part of the triad. The other part is strategic bombers. These are planes like the iconic B-52 and the super sleek B-2 stealth bomber. They can be recalled at the last minute, which gives them a flexibility that missiles don't have. The whole idea is that it would be impossible for an enemy to take out all three parts at once, which makes the overall deterrent much, much stronger. Check, gears up, tide, flaps up, pilot. To really get why the Minuteman was such a big deal, we have to hop in a time machine back to the late 1950s. The Cold War was in full swing, and there was a ton of tension between the US and the Soviet Union. After the Soviets launched the Sputnik satellite, a huge fear swept across America known as the Missile Gap, the terrifying idea that the Soviets had more and better long-range missiles than the US did. The American missiles at the time were clunky, liquid-fueled giants that took hours to get ready. The Minuteman was the answer to the sphere. Its solid fuel design meant it could be launched in minutes, not hours by placing hundreds of them in hardened silos all across the country, the U.S. suddenly had a powerful and survivable force that could respond at a moment's notice. It totally changed the game, closed the perceived missile gap, and solidified the strategy of mutually assured destruction, MAD, which, as scary as it sounds, arguably kept the peace for decades. The older missiles used liquid fuel, which was corrosive, dangerous, and took forever to get ready to launch, sometimes hours. The Minuteman, which first showed up in the early 60s, was a total game changer. It used solid fuel, which is stable and ready to go at a moment's notice. This meant it could be launched in just a few minutes. This made it a much faster and more reliable defense. It also has its own internal guidance system, which is basically a very sophisticated combination of gyroscopes and accelerometers. Once it's launched, it knows where it is and where it's going without needing any outside signals like GPS, which means it can't be jammed. Over the last 60 years, the Minuteman has been getting constant upgrades to keep up with the times. New versions have come out with better accuracy, more targeting options, and tougher defenses against anti-missile systems. They have a great maintenance system, too. The missiles are designed to be highly reliable, but if something does break, a specialized crew goes out to the silo and just swaps out the part. This remove and replace approach helps them keep the missiles ready to go almost 100% of the time. It's pretty amazing how this Cold War era weapon has evolved to remain a cornerstone of national security today. Speaking of the future, the Minuteman III won't be around forever. After more than 60 years of service, it's getting ready to pass the torch to a brand new system called the LGM 35A Sentinel. The upgrade is a huge deal because while the Minuteman has been updated a ton, its basic infrastructure, like the silos themselves, is getting pretty old. The Sentinel is being designed from the ground up for the modern era. It will use a modular architecture, which is a fancy way of saying it will be much easier to upgrade with new technology as it comes out. This will keep the land-based part of the triad reliable and effective for decades to come, ensuring the deterrent is ready for whatever the future holds. Right now, there are 400 Minuteman III missiles in the U.S. arsenal. They're spread out across the heartland at three Air Force bases, covering thousands of square miles of missile fields, the 90th Missile Wing at F.E. Warren Air Force Base, Wyoming, the 341st Missile Wing at Malmstrom Air Force Base, Montana, and the 91st Missile Wing at Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota. 
So, what'd you think? Anything in this video surprise you? Or maybe you got a question about something we covered? We'd totally love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you dug learning about these awesome machines, please smash that big thumbs up. It really helps us out. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our future vids. Make sure to hit that notification bell too so you're always the first to know when we drop something new. Thanks a bunch for watching everyone and we'll catch you on the next one.